Welcome to Son of the Most High Channel. All praises to the Most High Yahuwah. I'm Brother Jedaniah, and I appreciate y'all tuning in to my channel. Let us return to our original heritage and culture of the Second Covenant in Yahusha. Hallelujah. All right, brothers and sisters, let us conclude this um, relationship between Yahweh and Yahusha and the man and the woman. Of course, we can't leave out the angels and the children, but we need to see on a broader scope here when we're talking about dominion. So let's get the meaning of dominion. It says here, supreme authority, sovereignty, a self-governed nation. Let's go down here and get some more meanings here. Control over a country or people. Elohim has dominion over all his creatures or creation or controls his creation. Let's look at some more. Let's see what else we can find here. Uh, the power or right of governing and controlling sovereign authority, rule, control, dom domination. So, we see the Most High and the man in this position, in place. In order of things, brothers and sisters. Can't change it. It's all over the place. This dominion. Now let's go to submission. Submission is all over the place. Let's see. Submission. Let's get to the right definition first of all. Now it says a legal agreement to submit to the definition, <laughs> to the decision of an arbitrator. So, in a way, this can comply a little bit, but we're looking for this next one. An act of submitting something. No, not this one. Uh, where is the one? Here it is. Number two. The condition of being submissive, humble, or compliant so when you look at Yahusha it doesn't mean he has to be a woman a female or feminine to be submissive humble or compliant we all should be submissive humble and compliant with one another that's part of our being part of our makeup part of something that comes f with us from above imitating the image of almighty yahweh from above so again submission and obedience is not just tacked on to the woman's role and position it is something that is inherently given to us that we may, we may have dominion. You know, as it says in Revelations, they were given dominion. The man and his helper together become one flesh. They have dominion over the world. But, of course, her sin gave the man... Uh, rulership over her so it changed at that point but she still has a responsible role to submit to her husband and be humble and compliant this is why we see so many videos out there about men looking for these type of women abroad they call them 
passport bros getting their passports, flying out to find a submissive, humble, and compliant woman that's not going to sit there consistently putting them down at his throat, uh, being a living hell for him at home when he comes home. He don't want to have to come home to all of that after he's been on the job being submissive to his boss and compliant and humble to keep his job so that he can come home and be dominant. And, and you take that one thing from him that he is, you're you pretty much cutting him off from being who he is as a man. So now you got these men out here that's just cut off from being a man. They're not happy. They they think they're happy because their wives are happy or their women are happy because they're doing everything they can to make them happy, but the wives ain't doing everything they can to make him happy. He has to come home to hell or being commanded and controlled. And now they're coming up with some new narcissistic, uh, masculine, macho thing for him being in his dominant position in his place in his role. Because we are in living in a satanic backwards world, brothers and sisters. And we're trying to get back to the order of the Most High. So again, submissive doesn't just mean it's feminine or female. And our greatest example is Yahweh and Yahusha. Yahweh begot Yahusha out directly out of himself. So that he would fulfill all of his will on the earth in full submission, humbleness, and compliance to the Most High's authority and dominion and control. There's, he became a helper unto his father as all sons should become helpers unto the both parents. Y'all see what I'm saying? So there's a great order of things to see here. And that's where wisdom comes in. And, and it's called her for this reason. Submission, humble, and compliance so that you can properly correlate the role wisdom plays when it comes and resides with you. It's the It's part of the spirit of the Most High, which is... It's the Most High Spirit. I mean, the Most High Spirit is submissive, humble, compliant, and is His power, His humbling power to do His will that's within Himself. He has that role within Himself. So does His Son. His Son has dominion. As it says here in Daniel chapter 7, dominion over all the earth and everything and it's over Zion but guess what Zion has dominion over all the earth too with him but we are submitting ourselves humbly before Yahusha though we are also kings and priests as well but we will judge as the Messiah judge on behalf of the Most High and we're going to possess the kingdom and we will take our rightful place as the dominers the do <laughs> is that a word <laughs> we're going to have our dominion over all the nations now they have dominion over us and we are submissive and obedient to them in all the lands in the whole world. It don't matter if you was a native Negro here in America. They came over and took over. You were submissive and obedient or made to be one way or another through slavery, servitude, whatever the case may be, hiring or uh, whatever it was, you were made to serve these nations when you failed your mighty Elohim you became the servants that's why this uh, 
in Ezra said, uh, he was asking, how long, you know, we were made to be, you know, over them. How long will we serve them? <laughs> when is our kingdom coming? You know, they ask that questions in the regular Bible, you know. And it, when when shall it come? When, when, when shall we get the kingdom? Because it was given into Yahshua's hands, whom Yah. Husha is king over. And the other nations will flip the role and they will become submissive and subservient to us in our dominion, brothers and sisters. And we will be kings and priests over the earth and reign on the earth with Yahusha, because that's our position and place that we was always made to be in. So, when Yahusha return in the kingdom of Yahusha, as he's preparing the kingdom for Almighty Yahweh, where there will be no flesh in his kingdom, but Yahusha's kingdom it will be part flesh and part spirit, for he and all those who were raised and caught up with him will reign and rule in spirit on the earth, while all the evil will no longer reign all over the place. And they'll be locked away for a thousand years. You're just going to have good messengers all over the place now. And good. And all the men and women who made it. Raised up from the dirt. And uh, caught up in the air and changed at that particular point in time. They would come down and, on Mount Olive. And, and then we'll, we'll, we'll uh, perform our final part of taking the kingdom. And once the kingdom is ours. We will be set up as the royal house of the Most High. And we will reign. I'm talking about the 12 tribes will reign over all the nations. And they will be subject to us. That is what's written and spoke of in the scriptures. But these heathens thinking that they kingdom going to roll right over into the Most High's kingdom. And they somehow going to still reign and rule over everybody. When that's not written nowhere, the Gentiles' kingdom is coming to an end. Rome is coming to an end. You Europeans' reign and rule is coming to an end. You would not go into the kingdom and reign and rule over Zion anymore. This is your moment of reigning and ruling over Zion, controlling Zion. Ministering unto Zion, being kings and, and priests of your religions over Zion, that's over with. An end has come to the Gentile rule at that point in time when Yahusha shows up. It's over with. So we are going to be the masters in full dominion, full control, full sovereign authority over all the nations. And if you refuse to come up to pay homage to the Most High three times a year, he going to put them curses on you. He's going to plague you. He's going to withhold the rain. And if you keep resisting, he's going to do more. Which means all of you outside of our land not going to have the law, statutes, and commandments put in your minds and hearts to do them. You're going to have to do like we did. But the ones in our land, as the Most High has said, his land and his people will be complete and they will enjoy their Sabbath day of rest. They will have rest for a thousand years. And I'm talking about Zion, the 12 tribes and all the ones that make it with us back into our lands. Because we're going to have Gentiles within our borders with the law, such commandments and their minds and hearts do them as well. But they're going to have their position in place in that kingdom. They still going to be with us as husband and wife, still being submissive, humble and compliant 
to our dominion, our headship. Within our walls, within our borders, we're going to be married to the Gentiles. The ones that's going to be in our land is going to have the, the second covenant in them and the spirit of Most High in them. Remember, there's always a position in place. There's an order of things that still exist. Just like in the heavens, you have Yahuwah, Yahusha. Yah, Yahusha is fully submitted and compliant and humble to the Most High. You have the angels fully submitted, humble, compliant to the Most High and Yahusha. You even have some of the higher angels over having dominion over the other angels where the other angels submit to them it's the same as your kids your children you put them in dominion over some of your brothers the, the younger brothers and sisters the uh, the oldest one is always responsible and always in, in control when you leave off to go to work or somewhere you look at the oldest one you give your commands to him and then he turns around and, and gives his commands to those children and look after them. So this dominion and submission and obedience role is always everywhere in the earth. It's part of the image of the Most High, seen and unseen. The things we can't see up there right now, we can't just look up and say, okay, I can see. Uh, look at that angel right there being submissive to that uh, that uh, other angel right there. Oh, here come Yahoo Shuff and so bow the neck of that other angel over there. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? We 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 can't look them see that, but we see them here with us in us in our actions in our in the world. Same in the animal kingdom. Same with insects. Same with the sun and the moon and the stars. The dominant sun, the submissive moon. And you have the stars or the luminaries working in order with both. So, again, it's not necessary to say that the male or the female role is um, particularly dominant or submissive because that switches up. Like when the husband's gone, the wife has dominion over the home and the children. She's in command. She's in authority. And those children must be submissive and obedient to her. And when he's there, he's he's over the wife. He's over the kids. He has his dominion. And then the wife submits and the children to the husband or to the father of that house. Just like when we had to submit to that angel, the Most High, son before us. He said, because his name is in him. Obey him. Y'all hear what I'm saying? The authority, power, and control of, of Almighty Yahweh was in that messenger that went before us. So, women, you have your moments as a helper of your man, your husband. You have your authority with him because you're one with him like Yahusha has his authority because he's one with him. Almighty Yahweh, he comes directly out of him, just like you come directly out of man. So you have your dominion as well. 
but he's the head of it. That's just it. That's that's his place, his position. Yahusha is one with the Father and is the Father, but he is also playing his part. The Father begot him for a, a reason out of himself. And it's to set this order and this rule in place that he wanted to set. And so you see Yahusha playing that submissive role with which most people call feminine, female, woman. And it's not necessarily the case that, that it's not that way. You have to open your eyes to see this. And then you understand wisdom. While King Solomon is calling wisdom her or this is written her. But you can also put uh, uh, the submissive, humble, um, compliant spirit of the Most High. That's his spirit. When the Most High say, this person is healed, his almighty power heals it completely. It is done. If he speaks it, it is done. There's instant compliance, instant doing, instant. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So you have to dig deeper into all this. Even, you know, with people worshiping earth now, mother earth and, well, it, it's by the power and breath of the most high and his workmanship, we were fashioned out of the earth and the earth is said to be the mother of us all because it, it, it's making a phrase that we can comprehend the way we are born from a woman's womb. Now, Father is life. He took the dormant earth, fashioned it, and put that life, which he put in Yahusha's hand to give life, because he was the life and the light. And the Father used him to make everything. And he put that life in him. And he did make everything. That was his job and purpose. Though everything is attributed to the Father. While it's getting done. So the same with the woman. You know the man plants the seed inside the, the life. Barren seed. It's alive. It's, it's, it's wiggles and squirms and swims and once once it reached the egg, the dormant egg, it gives life inside of that egg. And now you have life in it. That's the beginning of a man child. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Woman was taken out of man. She's here to help that man. She's here to bear his children. The lineage is with the man. All these women having abortions and stuff and thinking, that, oh, it's my right, it's my power, it's my body. I have the right fussing and fighting to kill their child. Most of them are in sin anyway. And their mindsets is of a sinful mindset. For anyone that's with the Father or, or has his spirit, don't destroy life. They give life. This is your telltale key sign, brothers and sisters, when you see these women out of control. 
killing up, murdering up their, their, the seed of the man. Murdering up their own family members. Murdering up the order of the Most High. By, number one, they murder it away right away when they fornicate with someone they ain't supposed to be lying down with. Then number two, when they've conceived, they end up going to some clinic because they think they have power and authority over that life. They do not. The Most High has the ultimate power and authority. Then the Son, then that man, then that woman. And so the satanic world then took the man out the way, this, that, that child may be the woman's only and very little control over the child belongs to the man and that's that man's child first and foremost okay it's theirs together of course but I'm talking about just as all life belongs to the most high and it's this he's the ultimate dominion and authority over all he has given dominion and authority over the man to control that household. His wife is his possession. She can't just do something like that without his permission. So this dominion and submissiveness has been thrown all over the place made to look evil they don't turn this good thing into evil it's evil for a man to be dom dominant it's evil for a woman to be submissive and obedient but they will quickly go to their jobs and be submissive and obedient and on their jobs huh men and women you go you mean you you you, you go to that job and you have your d dominant role there. But men, when you go home, you turn into the submissive. You turn into the submissive one the, the, in full compliance to your wife. And she has the headship and the dominion. And then things won't ever work out that way. Because it's out of order. I'm not saying she she can't have any say so or she's supposed to be a helper. She's supposed to have that type of love to not uh, hurt you, the man or uh, or your family. So she's gonna look after the family with 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 her best and good intentions. And if the husband is dropping a ball a little bit in some area, she going to step up like she's supposed to. And they're going to work it out and fix things if they both with the most high and keep the order in, in the right order. They're going to do the right thing together as a, as a unit. But when you step out of that, all hell breaks loose, y'all. I've seen it in my own past, in my own life. Having children outside of marriage. Setting up a storm. All hell broke loose in my life. And there's still uh, scars from that to this day. But it's something I have taken responsibility for and repented of and confessed and turned from. Though the scarring is still here, but one the moment when that sun return, it's going to be the complete washing away of that sin. It's going to completely be washed away to where I won't even remember none of it anymore. And that's what I'm looking for forward to I'm looking for and I'm looking forward to that moment when that 
ultimate face of sin is stripped away from my mind, from my body, when I get my new body and a new mind, and in a full, complete indwelling of the Father's Kodesh set apart spirit, with all that that spirit has to offer. And that's why we are called mighty ones, Elohims in um, Psalms and in um, the earlier books, Psalms 86, let's see here, 86, Wait a minute. Did I get that wrong? It's 82. <laughs> 82 and 6. Yep. I have said you are Elohims and all of you are children of the Most High. He's talking about the new position and place that you're going to be in once you come out of these flesh bodies and get a body like Yahusha. You'll be as he is. He's an Elohim and you'll become an Elohim. But you should die like men. Telltale sign right there. Though you are Elohim in spirit and soul, but now <laughs> you're still going to die like men. Like a man. And fall like one of the princes. So. You have to live up. To your role now. In Yahusha. Your Elohims. Rise up to be the kings. The spiritual men and women. That you have to be. Fulfill your roles. Your dominant role. Your submissive role. Whether you're working for your employer. And you're under submission, uh, servants obey your masters. Who are your masters? Your employers. So employees and but obey your employers. They're the dominant ones on your job. They have dominion to command with authority and rulership over you on those jobs. And you supposed to be submissive, humble, and compliant to their orders and and do the job you are hired to do. You shouldn't be on the job complaining every single second of your life up there. Enjoy. Thank the most high. Even if the there's a tyrant over you. You pray up to the Most High. You put that tyrant in the Most High's hands. And he gonna uh, abase that tyrant in time. You hear what I'm saying? Still obey your employers. If you are the head and you're being that way with your employees, you, the Most High gonna come down on you. Because when you're in dominion, you have a responsibility, a righteous, good responsibility to treat your servants or employers with respect and rule over them with the, with the fruits of the Spirit. Keep a tough hand, but it doesn't have to be a rude, crude Ty tyrannical hand around them, around their throats, the way they hate you. You hear what I'm saying? All right, brothers and sisters, I think I covered this enough for you to understand the, the dual roles that the dominion and submissiveness play within all of us. And the position in place that is the man's and the woman's. And even together they have this 
dominion and submission thing working in their relationship. Just as Yahweh and Yahusha does. And the angels and the other angels do. You know, the higher angels and their other angels. They have their hierarchy within themselves. That dominion and um, submissiveness and obedience within themselves. That dual role working within them. The submission. This is the image of Almighty Yahweh put in the earth before your faces. Night working with day. Hear what I'm saying? Each season has its dominion. And then it submits to the next season. It bows down. Here comes spring. Winter got to bow down. And bow down to spring. The spring has its dominion. But here comes summer. Summer has to bow down. I mean, uh, spring has to bow down to summer now. Now summer has its dominion. Here comes autumn or fall. And it has dominion. And so summer has to bow down to it. Then comes winter. Fall has to bow down to winter now and give control to winter. Winter has its dominion. Y'all see it there? It's everywhere. It's everywhere. So I'm going to leave it at that. Sis, I hope this helped you. Don't let nobody fool and deceive you. Y'all should have a good idea now about the, the um, relationship between Yahweh and Yahushua and the angels concerning the image in their image in this earth in man, woman, and child. And the dual roles of dominion and submission in us all. It's in us all. It's up in the heavens and them all up there and it's in us all down here. One one way or another you're going to play both roles in the life, in your life. Hallelujah. Thank y'all for watching. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell. And give me a thumbs up. And definitely share this video. Y'all know where to leave those comments. But email me if you have any questions. And with that, I'm going to say, Shalom, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah.